please don't run away. I look so weird. Oh my gosh. What's up guys? Welcome back. Do not adjust your television sets. I just only have complexion products on and a little bit of contour, which I now know is not enough if I ever thought that it was for me to feel comfortable leaving the house because I feel like I feel like I look crazy. <laughs> I look like a little naked mole rat right now. Anyway, the reason that I look like this is because we're gonna be doing a follow-up today, a part two to the Lauren Conrad Beauty collection with the new release that she came out with. So I have before me the powder blush, the eyeshadow palette in Sunrise, which she's come out with another one since then, which I wish I'd known that she was going to because I think I would have liked it better. But regardless, we've got Sunrise. We've got mascara. We've got a brow pencil. And then we have a a bronzer that I'm supposed to pretend doesn't exist. We'll talk about that in a little bit and the, I don't know, teeny tiny little bit of like controversy PR, you know, upheaval that happened with this. And as usual, especially with new brand releases and things like that, I'm going to put on my marketer hat later on in the video when we talk about my final thoughts. And I'm gonna give you guys kind of <laughs> my opinion on her positioning of her brand so far as she's kind of rolling out these next iterations since her first release. And also, if you haven't watched the first video on Lauren Conrad Beauty, it was about a month ago, I will link it. Yeah, and yeah, and it's just probably better if you go back and watch that because there are going to be products that are in her line that I'm not going to talk about today that I've already given my review on that I might refer to, might spoil it for you. You know, the eyeliner, the lip glosses, the uh, cream cheek, all of those things, the highlighter, those were all in the first video. So I'm gonna move you guys in. We're gonna make my face stop looking like this. <laughs> so let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so I feel like I also would be remiss if I did not mention that she has also come out with skincare. I probably won't be trying that anytime soon just because my skincare is on lock. And as far as the products that she did end up putting out, I definitely have those covered in my routine. I'm sure that it's lovely, but uh, if you are new to my channel and you came looking for that, that's probably not gonna happen here. We're just gonna be talking about some pigment products today. So we're gonna start with the bronzer. <laughs> because it is the next step in my routine after I've done my complexion and my contour. And today I am wearing the uh, Beauty Bakery Insta Bake foundation because your girl needed a little bit of glass skin. Okay, we are short on sleep. And then I also used, I think, the Beauty Bakery uh, concealer that goes with it. But this is the bronzer that I said we're not really supposed to talk about because they have pulled it from the line and they did this kind of in the wake of a lot of people commenting, basically asking why there was only one shade. So this is the shade, it is a very warm, kind of medium tan sort of shade that might be a little too warm even for me. And I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, put it on my face. I don't know, is this the right brush? Oh, nope, that's not the right brush. We're going to kind of tap it in with this big Thrive brush. This is actually my favorite bronzer brush because it's so big it almost acts like a sponge. Isn't that better than trying to dust it on or buff it on? It's a little orange for my taste. I totally understand that most bronzers that are meant to kind of try and cater to more than just my skin tone are going to end up going a little bit warmer than I would prefer. My favorite bronzer right now of the moment is the Charlotte Tilbury. This one comes in four shades, I think. And it has a you know, pretty, pretty darn big difference between those two in terms of uh, shade value and also shade depth. And the reason, again, that she kind of got the criticism was that, you know, it's not just about having inclusive shade ranges in foundations and concealers. You are not exempt from those needs and that conversation uh, just because you didn't put out a complexion product. So yeah, this will be kind of the, I would say, larger pivot point of the topic of conversation later on in the video as far as like how I feel about the way she's positioning her brand right now. But that is what the bronzer looks like and they're pulling it until they can release more shades. Let's talk about the performance of the other products here. So we also have a powder blush. These are all 
kind of like beauty counter meets Elme to me. I don't know, all the packaging and everything. We talked about this in the previous video, but the way that she has gone to this very minimal packaging, no mirror or anything. She has a segment of her website where she discusses how to recycle each product and how to you know, clean out the component and recycle it in your own local recycling. So I mean, I feel like she deserves some credit there. She cares. If you're gonna put something out right now, I do feel like you know, <laughs> having the entire life cycle of that component in mind is better than not. At least she kind of took that on board. So this is the shade Peach. This comes in two shades. There's like another one that's sort of mauve and obviously I'm not using all of the products in her line because the, like, the other ones are kind of creamy. So, you know, it's like a cream cheek. Was not a big fan of the cream cheek. Am enjoying this formula. Like not really like mad at it at all. And it's a really pretty, just a rosy, color. Oddly though, this is the shade peach. And I would argue that is not peach at all at all. Like at all at all. It doesn't look, that doesn't look like a shade of peach at all. Like when we talked about peach in my last video, in my favorites video, like the amber palette, like that's peach. When it goes on the skin, it's got, you know, undertones of peachy orange. Whereas this, I would argue, is just pink. <laughs> it's just rosy pink. I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's just don't call it peach if it's not peach, you know? I don't know, semantics. Okay, so I'm starting to look a little bit more, a little bit more like a human being and less like a naked mole rat. So this is the eyeshadow palette, fam. And you know, I've had a chance to use all of these and kind of gather my thoughts here. It comes with six shades, kind of reminds me of the Lawless, the little one. And the formula is a little bit better than the Lawless formula, but it's still kind of in that like beginner makeup territory where it's a little bit lower pigment. Um, and sometimes it can get a little bit patchy. So I do prefer to use this with a primer. So I'm just gonna go in with my primer potion for Ur for Ur and Decay because it's the one that's sitting in front of me. Can y'all tell? We had a rough night last night. <laughs> Little baby, he just wants to uh, get real, real upset between midnight and 3 a.m. Why? I have no idea. Also, anybody who has ever had a docatot, why does the baby sleep so well in the docatot and not his thousand dollar bassinet? Because you can't technically sleep a child in a docatot. It's not safe. Like you kind of have to keep eyes on them so that they don't block their airways or something like that. It's not approved as like a co-sleeper or something, but put him in his snow and well, he hates life and wants you to uh, answer for it. So that is what my under eyes are answering for right now. So I just dusted a little bit of the lightest shade on there so that I could uh, set that primer. And this is a decidedly warm colorway. I don't disagree with this. It's called sunrise. You know, I knew what I was getting myself into, but the deepest shade being this kind of chocolatey brown, it works really well as a uh, crease shade on me. It works really well as uh, an eyeliner shade on me, at least from the color standpoint, not necessarily from the formula standpoint. I'll get to that in a second, but you can see that this is not necessarily for everyone. If you get my drift, I also, like I said, I'll stick a photo of the other colorway of this uh, that she released after I ordered these on the screen and I just like it so much better. I prefer lavenders and things like that on me. I'm gonna go in my crease here and I'm kind of mixing the light tan color here with the white to just get a little bit more spreadability because in my experience and the first time that I use this, I've used this three times now, using this without a primer, I could not get things to really stick on my eyes very well or they stuck in skippy ways. And so I feel like we've really solved for that in this case, but also I feel like it's very, very difficult, like increasingly difficult to blend the shades as I layer them. So I'll go in with the deeper shade in my crease and it will just kind of stick there and won't go anywhere. And so that could just be, could just be a personal problem because I don't want to lay down a, like a whole lot of product. I'm not looking for something really dramatic. And so I think I am asking a lot of it to try and just apply very little, but also ask it to spread out really evenly. Not all formulas really want to do that, but at the same time, you have a lot of choices when it comes to eyeshadow out there and uh, you know, everybody vying for your money it should be something impressive and easy to use and a pleasure that feels like it's worth your money. You shouldn't have to work to make it work. I'm gonna also take that, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. and I'm also just gonna take a little bit of the white shade. <laughs> I mean, white, you know, it's like a creamy shade. 
and, uh, you know, clean up underneath my eyes. But again, a benefit of being a creamy white shade and the assumption that there's going to be a creamy white shade in most uh, eyeshadow palettes that are going to help me clean up on my skin tone, it's definitely not the case for everybody. Like it's gonna show up white on some people, not skin colored on some people. And so, um, you know, it's definitely like a different use case for anybody using this, depending on your skin tone. It just happens to work well on me because I'm complected like Lauren Conrad. Again, leaving a trail of breadcrumbs to what we're going to get to later in the video. So I'm going to try and use a little bit of this deep shade here and build my crease and see if we can get it to go on without being skippy. And I th think, uh, I think it's working. I think it's working. You have to have a little bit of patience. It's a pretty color though. Like all the colors are pretty. I feel like she did choose them well if this is what you're going for, but man, talk about a maxed out category in eyeshadow palettes, like a warm eyeshadow palette with some gold glitter in it. You can, I mean, they're a dime a dozen guys. They are everywhere. It's just about picking the formula that you like. These all though, all of her mattes, so her bronzer, her bronzer, and her blush, the bronzer and the blush are matte and uh, the mattes in the eyeshadow palette, they do have a really, nice blurring factor to them. I believe all of her stuff is talc free, I think. I think that's what we learned in the last video. Well, I overdid that one, didn't I? Gonna go in with that tan color and just kind of blend back into that. You know, I don't hate it. Is it worth your coin? Eh, you know, you decide but I don't hate it. I do think that the formulas themselves did end up really nice. And you know, if I were to choose between the Lawless, the little one palette and this one, I would still go with this one just because the formula is better. Taking that tan kind of all over my lid and I'm gonna go in with a flatter brush and I'm going to take that same tan shade and I'm gonna mix it with that gold just to get a little bit of spreadability out of it. It's kind of a makeup artist trick to, you know, take something that's a little bit harder to blend and mix it with something that has a little bit of shimmer to it and it will blend a lot more easily. And yes, you will get a little bit of the sheen from it, but I am not mad about that. So I'm just mixing that tan with that gold. And so there's like a regular gold and then there's like a glittery gold. And the glittery gold looks like that. It's actually more of a copper almost, isn't it? Or maybe it's just because I'm putting it next to the bronzer swatch on my hand. It's very pretty though. Let me see if it'll actually apply with a brush. Because sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. Oh, that's actually beautiful. I like how that kind of spreads out with a brush instead of piling it. You know, you kind of can just get a wash of that texture. And then I just take that brush that I was working with before, make sure we don't have too much shimmer right in the crease because it will distort all of that work that you've done trying to build a believable exaggerated crease, that nice shadow there. And then taking a little bit of the white up here and just cleaning up a little. What do we think? Is that an eye look that you guys can get behind? So yeah, I think that you have a lot of options here. You really do. I mean, any of these uh, dark colors here could be a like a local color on your eye, like on your lid or something. You could really work it up to a smoky eye. You could get glamour out of this if you wanted to with that really nice, uh, you know, shimmery kind of copper gold. But at the same time, it's going to kind of depend on your skin tone, whether you can get as much use out of this as I can. So moving on to her eyebrow pencil. It's also like really stormy today. So I feel like I'm just like extra sleepy. Sorry guys, if I feel like I'm just like drifting off. Sometimes I've said this before, but sometimes there's like days where I feel like I'm really talking to a whole lot of people. And then there's like days where I'm like, I'm in, alone in a room talking to a camera. And today is a, I'm alone in a room talking to a camera kind of day. So, hey guys, <laughs> this is going on the internet. Sometimes I have to remind myself of that. So giganto spoolie on this guy. This comes in, I wanna say four shades. I will not be using 
her liquid eyeliner in this video today because I just don't have that kind of patience or that kind of um, control over my faculties right now. It would easily ruin this entire look. But spoiler alert, if you didn't watch the first Lauren Conrad video, that was the star of the show because Lauren Conrad is, well, you know, kind of a connoisseur of a liquid eyeliner. And even as a person who does not like liquid eyeliner, I liked that liquid eyeliner. Okay, so the next thing to do here is to go back into the eyeshadow palette and I'm going to use my little Thrive Eyeliner fine brush here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna dip it in my mouth and I'm gonna use that dark shade, that brown, that chocolatey brown, and I'm gonna do my eyeliner that way, the way that I typically would, although I need something with a mirror. And we're going to see if we can get that same kind of satisfying line that I would typically get from my Thrive eyeshadow palette because their, eye, their eyeshadows, when you add water to them, become waterproof. Um, this does do the trick. It does. And so I feel like, you know, it is a good little all-in-one palette. I think a lot of times uh, brands will miss the mark on making a palette that's supposed to be an essentials palette and they leave out something that I feel like is really essential. It is gonna be a little different though today because she did also put out a mascara. So typically I would be so excited because I feel like no matter what I do on my eyes, if I pull out that Thrive Mascara, it will make anything look like I know what I'm doing because it'll just make my eyelashes go wha-bam and pra practically hide all of my mistakes. But uh, we have a new kid on the block today with her mascara. I actually used this eyeshadow palette in my last video and I edited out a couple of times of me saying how much I didn't like the way that my eye makeup turned out because I felt like it was just so much golder than I had intended for it to be. I do find myself kind of leaning a little bit more towards uh, neutrals lately, like, I don't know, neutral to cool. And this is just very, very warm. But when I put it on with the rest of her makeup that she put out, I feel like it works really well. I think it's because that bronzer is so warm. And I feel like there was a learning curve to getting those eyeshadows to really like go on the way that I wanted them to. They were patchy at first and they were clingy, you know, kind of thing. And I managed to uh, get them to work with a primer. But I think that a primer is actually like essential with them. Okay, little eyeliner moment. So yeah, I mean, that's like, I feel like that's a complete idea. Mascara, so this is, probably called the mascara, it is, in the shade Onyx. So it only comes in black, which is not uncommon. Um, I think that, you know, pretty much anybody that I've talked to from a brand ownership standpoint, like CEOs and stuff like that, that's put out a mascara, they're like, no one buys brown mascara. Like you really have to uh, have a pretty large market share in order to even justify putting out a brown mascara. But I personally am a brown mascara girl, so. I'll always root for it. I'm glad that Thrive has one. So, I mean, we've got a regular nylon bristle brush here. We've got a regular clean beauty mascara here. And it washes off like a regular mascara. It's probably going to smudge like a regular mascara kind of thing. Um, it's definitely not in any way waterproof or tubing or anything. And in my experience, I've just never met a mascara, especially with a clean beauty kind of like footnote on it that's not gonna smudge under some circumstances. This face of makeup though, is probably not going to cause it to smudge just because it's all powder. Everything around it is powder. And so I feel like the biggest challenge for a non-tubing or non-waterproof mascara is when you wear it with all cream products around it because oils, they're the things that you use to remove mascara. And so they're gonna remove your mascara kind of thing. Um, I don't feel like there's that much danger of that happening with this, this face of makeup. Mm. You're probably like, wow, Khaki, this seems to be going pretty fast. Like, I feel like it's going fast too. And I feel like once I got the hang of using the eyeshadow palette, like the rest of it is very, very easy to use. And I think that that's kind of the big selling point of this is that it's beginner makeup in a lot of ways. The shades are easy to wear on my complexion. The formulas are not insanely pigmented. And so that works well for someone like me who can easily get, you know, in over my head on pigment. And the choices that she made as far as how things mesh together makes it so that if you apply all of her products to your face, you will get a look that makes sense together. It does take a while to build this to the amount of volume that I actually really want to get out of my eyelashes. But then again, I am so spoiled by the Thrive and a lot of people 
complain that the Thrive builds volume so fast that they get in over their heads really quickly. So it is entirely a preference thing. Like, I think this is a really nice mascara if you just like a regular clean mascara formula, basically. I'm gonna brow gel myself here. It, you probably noticed that like when I do my brow pencil, I start like here instead of all the way up here just because I can get marker brow really easily and I would rather have the natural looking texture at the front of my brows where they're a little bit thinner that I can get with a mousse. You know, you can just get that kind of pushed up look right there with a mousse. Not gonna lie. I feel cute, Lauren Conrad, okay? I feel cute. I do want to go with a little bit more of her powder blush, I'm sorry, the powder blush. Very, very agreeable. Very agreeable formula. I do feel like there is a lot of thought and a lot of care that went into making these formulas very easy to put on. We said this in the last video, but they don't feel like professional products because she's not a professional makeup artist. And sometimes you don't really want that, you know? Not everybody wants something that is like crazy, crazy pigmented, the most bang for your buck you could possibly get on pigmentation. Sometimes you want something that's just easy and these are really easy. Okay, she has lip glosses that I reviewed in the last video and I don't know what I did with them because I haven't been in this room for so long. So we're gonna go with a Rowan lip gloss today. Oh, my little man is crying. He must be getting changed. A Little bit of my khaki lip liner. And then we're gonna use the Rowan lip gloss in Charlie to finish this off. One of the best formulas ever. I did just get the Lisa Eldridge ones in the mail though. And I'm gonna have to kind of like, again, build an entire look around them because they are not shrinking from the light guys. Like they're not like a, oh, throw it on glossier kind of lip gloss. Like they are a Luke. And one of them is so similar, I feel like, to that Azalea shade that's very challenging. That pre presents a score I wanna settle. You know, not challenging in the sense that I think it's unusable, but like it's something that I wanna conquer from the Wayne Goss uh, blush release that I think we might after some trial and error off camera, uh, combine them and, you know, make like a full, I don't know, Moby Fuchsia look. <laughs> I say that. <laughs> I could get in way too deep on that and it go real, real wrong, but we'll see. So I'm gonna give myself a little spritz because this is an all powder look and I wanna kind of melt it here. So this is the Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray from Hourglass. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna move you guys out. We will discuss my final thoughts on this particular release, how it relates to the initial release. And um, like I said, I'm gonna put my marketing hat on and we'll kind of discuss it in that context. Okay guys, so this is the final look and I'm genuinely pleased with it. But let's go ahead and talk about like the pricing on all of these real quick and how many shades there are in each of these releases. Okay, so the eyeshadow palette, I lied. It's $29, that's kind of a lot. That's like $5 a shadow. It's kind of a lot, but I do really, like I really, really wish that I had like waited two seconds to pull the trigger so that I could have gotten the, what's it called? The Magic Hour colorway. It's so much prettier than the Sunrise. In my opinion, it just leans rosier pink. It just looks far more right within, I don't know, my happy place, but um, you know, they both exist and they're both very pretty and they both follow like a very, very similar set of uh, depths of the colors. Just one kind of leans warm and then one kind of leans cool. I think that the eyeliner pencil must have also come out since this release. Maybe I bought it, but I don't think that I did. It's been a minute. I don't know, guys. <laughs> Oh man, she just keeps putting stuff out. So uh, I didn't get the eyeliner pencil. The mascara is $20 and it only comes in black. The powder blush comes in two shades, peach and romance. Romance is kind of like a rosier mauve color. The eyebrow pencil is $22. It comes in four shades, a dark brown, a light brown, a blonde, and a light blonde. So we do not have a red and we do not have a gray. I think that when those colors come out like they did in the Rare Beauty release, you know what you're doing, you know? And then the bronzer, which is no longer on the website, is only in this one shade. And again, they are going to re-release it, I presume, when they have more shades to release it with. So, 
I've been alluding to it the entire time. I want to go ahead and just kind of like vent my thoughts on all of this. So I feel like this iteration of her brand gives us a lot more insight into where her head is at. And I think that while these formulas work really nicely and they work really nicely on me specifically, the main critical error that I think that she has made and, you know, stands to continue to make, but we are seeing, you know, a, a few moves in the right direction, her pulling the bronzer, etc., is that Lauren Conrad placed herself right at the center of this brand. In other words, she thinks that she is her customer. And that is not just preclusive of the amalgam of different kinds of people out there, the melange of different kinds of people out there, but also it sells her short in the sense of, you know, where her brand could possibly go. She could have done a rare beauty type release where she really looked into what was happening in the conversation in the space, how to do best by all of her potential customers, because let's be real, she didn't have a customer going into this. She could have decided who her customer was going into this. And when she did decide who her customer was, she just looked at herself in the mirror and she was like, well, my customer is Lauren Conrad. And so is it surprising that her stuff looks good on me? No, because I look like Lauren Conrad for all intents and purposes. I am basic white girl. But I think that there are a lot of brands out there and I mean, people have been accusing a lot of big brands for years now and rightly so of doing this kind of thing on purpose of being uninclusive so that people kind of start a conversation around it because no press is bad press and they will get the attention, even if it's negative attention that they need to, you know, gather followers or gather clout or just be more well known. Like, Hey, there that this, you know, makeup line even exists kind of thing, even if it was negative attention to begin with. I don't know for sure, but I would argue that this didn't really make a big enough splash, the actual, the scandal of it. And the fact that they just wrote it in the comments, like it actually took me digging in on Google and finding a thread on Reddit about it. It wasn't like it made some kind of like front page news story on any kind of blog, or it wasn't like they made a big deal out of it on their Instagram or anything like, oh, we're pulling the bronzer until we get more shades. They could have made a big deal about it and been like, oh, our bad, oh my gosh, public apology. But they didn't, it was just kind of like someone screenshotted a comment that said like, hey, we pulled it off the website, we're gonna do better. To me that says, um, we didn't really think about it up front, which is still kind of problematic, but they didn't do it on purpose to get clout for negative attention, which I guess, you know, <laughs> it's better than it could have been kind of thing. So the other thing that I noticed on her website is that, and I'm not sure if this happened directly as a result of this, or if this was always the case, but lots of black models and the new eyeshadow palette colorway is on a black model, even though I would argue, it doesn't really work that way. It's like a kind of an ashy mauve tone that they've put on this model and the lipstick that they put on her is pretty light too. And I just think that while it looks good, it wasn't designed for her, you know? And I think that there are a lot of brands out there that are doing better by that customer because I genuinely think that we can't stand by that old conversation anymore of, well, this was just what we did as our preliminary release and we're gonna do more iterations of it later and expand our shade range because that still lends preferential treatment and again, lets us into the real inner workings of a brand's mindset as to what they thought were the default shades, the default shades being basic white girl. And so even when, cause this is my own personal knee jerk, I kind of go the Tati route when there's a new release, I go, if I can afford it, I'm gonna buy the whole release. I wanna just almost treat it like I got it in PR. You know, I want to just have a resource of unbiased information for you guys that includes as many of the products as I could afford to buy so that you can save your money where necessary. I'm going to take the brunt of owning too much makeup so that you don't have to kind of thing. That said, when someone messaged me, and you guys are always so great about tagging me in new releases on Instagram and things like that, uh, you guys tagged me in this new release and you're like, Lauren Conrad came out with more stuff. And I was like, boom, 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 add to cart, purchase. And then as soon as I did, I almost canceled my order. Like I, I, tr I almost tried to, it's really difficult to with small brands like that, but I almost emailed them and asked them to cancel my order because I realized I couldn't in good conscience stand behind a release and say, yes, this is a good bronzer because this is not a good bronzer release because it was only one shade. And so there was a part of me even that felt like, oh my gosh, 
I feel complicit because I gave my money to this brand without even thinking about it. And so immediately I did go onto their Instagram as soon as I bought it. I was like, God, I'm such an idiot. I shouldn't have bought it. And, uh, and I asked them if they were, you know, planning on expanding their shade range. And I think I was one of the first ones to ask, but it, I mean, a lot of the influencers that I follow, they tend to kind of like pop up at the top of the comments because obviously I follow them. So Instagram shows them to me. And a lot of people were very politely, very respectfully being like, this is not enough. This is not a good bronzer release. You need to be more inclusive, you know, showing preferential treatment to like the basic medium white girl is just not acceptable anymore. And, you know, I'm glad that they pulled the release. That was the mature thing to do within the context of the situation. And the other reason that I think that this was such a missed opportunity from the standpoint of a marketer and the way that I tend to think about these kinds of things, positioning herself in the market is as soon as you are marketing specifically to basic white girl, you are in an ocean of competition so much more because it is so ubiquitous. That's the whole reason this conversation is happening is because the market is completely saturated with makeup for basic white girls. You know, if that's what you're looking for, you've got Tarte and everything else at Sephora and the drugstore and what have you, like it would have behooved them from a brand positioning standpoint to differentiate themselves and say, hey, we want more customers besides the basic white girl, come over here and look at this thing that we did, you know? But no, it's very like, I'm Lauren Conrad. This is the makeup that looks good on me. I think it'll look good on you too. And kind of like that being the end of her thought process on it <laughs> until people called her out. So yeah, guys, those are my thoughts. If this is a release that enticed you, it does get my support as far as the formulas are concerned. I don't love the eyeshadow as far as like, I'm just trying, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to do foxy eyes. I'm like just showing you that like this dark shade it doesn't really want to blend in the crease as much as I would like it to, in spite of all of the work that I did to kind of get it to go on really smoothly. But the blush formula is lovely. Her matte formulas are very, very nice. And nah, you know, I, I can't really complain about how they worked on me, but as we've discussed, that's not really the point. So yeah, guys, um, those are my thoughts on the Lauren Conrad release. I'm gonna go ahead and say, I wanted to have a really good, you know, authoritative, experienced opinion on these releases. And the first video seemed to get a lot of curiosity from you guys, but the first video also included only products that really would work on just about anybody. I feel like even the highlighter kind of met in the middle of uh, working on most skin tones kind of thing. We we're just talking about lip glosses and like eyeliner and stuff. As we've started to move into the territory of all of these pigment products, it's kind of doing what, granted it doesn't surprise me, but it was kind of doing what I was hoping that it wouldn't do and just staying right inside of that, like, you know, what she thinks of as safe territory of the makeup that looks good on her. And for that reason, I don't think that I'm gonna do like a part three or, you know, keep chasing Lauren Conrad Beauty down the rabbit hole of the things that she chooses to release, maybe here or there, if it's a product that I typically would go for kind of thing. But I feel like we've sort of, exhausted this avenue. And uh, I believe that her first release was a much more compelling release. This one leaves a lot to be desired. So yeah, guys, those are my thoughts on Lauren Conrad Beauty as a whole. Again, if you haven't watched the first video, I highly suggest that you go watch the first video. I ended up being very surprised by it because I ended up liking so many products that in every other line, I would never even go for like a liquid eyeliner. But uh, this really surprised me a lot less. If you did enjoy this, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, guys, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today and for putting up with my naked mole rat <sighs> sleepy eyes. But sharing this stuff with you and putting on a pretty face of makeup really makes my day. So thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.